Hey Parkview Panthers, Miss Tracy here, and today I am reading the storybook night. Even dragons love a good story. Here we go. Leo was a gentle knight in thought and word and deed. While other knights like fighting, Leo liked to sit and read. He was kind to every creature. He wouldn't hurt a fly. When mom and dad said, knights must fight, he just couldn't quite see why. One morning, Leo's parents said they'd like to have a chat. There was nothing wrong with reading, but he couldn't just do that. They'd seen an ad that morning in their favorite magazine. A dragon needed taming. Leo wasn't very keen. Nonsense, you'll enjoy it. It'll stop you getting bored. In case a dragon's scary, Here's a brand new shield and sword. Leo packed some sandwiches and lots of books, of course. And then with a sigh, he saddled up old Ned, his faithful horse. He hadn't traveled far, though the sun had risen high, when suddenly a fearsome creature swooped down from the sky. It had a lion's body, but it had an eagle's wings. A griffin, marveled Leo who had read about such things. Come on, snarled the griffin. I dare you to a fight. Oh, I'd rather not, said Leo. It wouldn't be quite right. I've got my brand new sword with me, so I'd be bound to win it. But how about a story with some pictures of you in it? Yes, please, the griffin nodded. He was really rather vain. So Leo read a book to him once, twice and then again it's yours to keep said leo as he clambered back on ned oh thank you cried the griffin and he bowed his noble head leo rode for hours though the heat was quite extreme then stopped to have his picnic by a welcome mountain stream who dares to trespass on my bridge inquired a hungry troll it's only me said leo would you like to share my role? The troll just laughed. No, thanks, he growled. I think I'll just eat you. But Leo said, my armor is pretty difficult to chew. I've got a brilliant book, though, if you'll hang on just a minute. It's full of juicy goats, and look, it's even got you in it. Hmm. That sounds good, the troll replied, his hunger put on hold. So Leo read the story, with some changes, truth be told. It's yours to keep, said Leo, as he clambered back on Ned. Oh, thank you, cried the grateful troll, and bowed his heavy head. Leo kept on riding through that long, hot afternoon. At last he came upon a town as empty as the moon. The leaves were burnt on every tree, the grass and flowers, too. He'd seen some messy streets before, but this was something new. Faces peered from windows, folks too scared to go outside. He trotted bravely onward. Hey, watch out, the people cried. What he saw around the corner sent him shaking in his shoes. The most enormous dragon who had just woken from a snooze. The dragon raised his eyebrows. Not another pesky knight. Don't worry, Leo told him. I haven't come for a fight. I've got the most amazing book with loads of dragons in it. But it's going in the trash unless you clean up right this minute. Oh, don't do that, the dragon cried. I'll clean it up right now. But I'm really bad at timing. Perhaps you can show me how? So Leo taught the dragon how to shovel, scoop, and clear. And one clear. And one by one, the townsfolk all began to lose their fear. Now can I have my story? Begged the dragon on his knees. So Leo read the book six times. A dragon is hard to please. It's yours to keep, said Leo, as he clambered back on Ned. Oh, thank you, cried the dragon, and he bowed his scaly head. When Leo reached his home at last, the cheers were long and loud. His parents hugged him very tight. Well done, you've made us proud. Now Leo is a hero, 
and his parents have agreed he doesn't have to fight at all. He's left in peace to read. Leave it.